This one, I can't reach this. Here we go. Just keep pulling that one. Kind of important that things don't get tangled down here. We gotta keep a bit of tension on this. <laughs> so in the boatyard, when I say everything was done to this boat, everything was done to this boat. Basically I had to strip it and rebuild it. We upgraded everything. But I like that, I like that type of work. I like getting dirty and nitty gritty. And of course, that's how I've always run my life. It's all about a leap of faith. Everything will work out. We're gonna have some hiccups and some problems along the way, but if you don't jump in, it's never gonna happen. For the first three months that we had this boat, what we were doing was learning so much from how do you handle a call on the radio to you know what, what is this line for? It's a halyard, it's caught on the line. Is it a halyard? Where do you keep your food? I mean, it'd be super easy to just, you know, put everything in a single pin and just close it, but it's much, much, much easier if you say, okay, all our carbs are here, all our vegetables are here. All the dive equipment that we have, then we have rebreathers and we have oxygen booster pumps and, you know, 30 Sony cameras. All these systems have to work for this boat to function. At first, it just seemed like it was never gonna happen. Pretty soon, this turned into 100% full-on diving and camera systems, and now we are a media machine. So creating those systems definitely makes your life easier, so much more pleasant. Once all systems were dialed and we tweaked it and we got everything working, now we're free to launch off before hurricane season in July and head off around the world for the next four years. I knew what Paul wanted to buy. It was not a boat. He wanted to buy freedom. We create the best visuals in the world of our oceans to be able to turn over those assets for not money, but for conservation. That's what motivates me. We can't just be on the sidelines watching the ocean die. We have to do something. Making the Bahamas our first destination was really important to me. I've been to the Bahamas twice before. There is an enormous amount of hope when you see a country with a vision for a blue economy that really is going to be built in the protection of its resources. And the reason we came back now is because the story is not over. We need to go do the best storytelling in the world with the best team. And at the foundation of that is the boat. Does it look like we know what we're doing or not quite? We came down looking for a weather window to cross the treacherous Gulf Stream. Separating mainland United States of America and the Bahamas is the mighty Gulf Stream. We had to cross it. Crossing the Gulf Stream is, uh, it can be extremely treacherous. If you get the wrong winds and tides mixed with the Gulf Stream, um, it can be very, very dangerous. So it's a critical to make sure that you cross it at the right time with the right weather. If the window is good enough to cross the stream, then make a, make a run for it. We did not want to be in 20 foot sea smashing in these steep rising waves on our inaugural expedition. I mean, that could blow up the whole expedition. 
everyone's tired. Everyone's sort of, you know, it's a lot of work to have 24 hour shifts and people aren't sleeping and they're on a boat this size, you can't have a huge crew. This is my first sailboat. We'll figure it out. Right now, we have a squall, so I'm holding the bow of the boat into the wind at 25 knots. We are about to go through a very high-speed ocean current cut. The current gets up to four or five knots. It's only 25 knots, what can go wrong? <laughs> what can go wrong? White smoke pouring out of the port engine. Coolant is spraying everywhere. We've got a major problem. That was a sinking feeling. How do we end up here from the dream of seeing the Bahamas just 30 miles away? We just have to shoot that little cross of weather tomorrow. We had our weather window to be tied up to a fuel dock in Florida. If this is gonna happen when everything is so dialed, what's gonna happen down the road? We'll just have to wait and see. So in order to make our weather window, we have to leave here no later than early tomorrow morning. Uh, the mechanics are gonna work late tonight, but they've got the port engine, they've got the new coolant hose on, they've got the new belts on, but uh, we have to make sure this engine doesn't overheat. There's no air locks in that coolant. So far, everything seems good. Hey, Paul, I'm just gonna do a forward and reverse check. Don't be alarmed. To all of a sudden see this boat just jump up and go was a great, great feeling. Off we went, sailing across the Gulf Stream to the Bahamas. The engines seem to be running well. The only uncertainty is, is weather.